So this is a follow-up to the meta guide. If you have the time, maybe that video is worth a watch, but it's not a follow-up in the strict sense, it's not a sequel, so it's not super important if you haven't watched it. One of the interesting takeaways from that video was that some people came to the conclusion that the DPS differences weren't enough for them to choose better damage over comfort. So I thought that it would be helpful in a similar way, or at least an interesting experiment, to see how much damage is lost by not going for meta sets. I'm a lance guy, so these are all lance armor sets, but if you don't play lance, then this will still give you a rough view on how much damage you drop by not using like a, a meta damage set. And if you are a lance user, Hopefully there's a bunch of cool armor sets for you to try out, if you haven't already. One last thing before we get into the nitty gritty, I'm gonna do the end bit at the start. Quite a few sets that are in this video have been inspired by comments on the last few videos that I've made. So if you've got things that you want to see, ideas that you want tested, or just you really want to see a certain kind of video made, then comments are the best way for me to know what you guys want to see. So starting at the start, in the early days of Monster Hunter, the Lance's shield was more for show than useful blocking. So here's an armor set for any of the old school evade lances. The main gimmick is using blade scale hone to maintain sharpness. And your choice of switch skill is pretty much up to how evade you want to feel. Anchor Rage is a great way to replicate the feelings of Monster Hunter Freedom Unite Lance, where most of the stuff you'd hop through, but big heavy attacks you'd still need to block. Or you could use Spiral Thrust and just use it to zip in between attacks, completely removing the need to block. I've also got an alternative set that includes Grinder S. It's got better damage output, but requires more of a hybrid playstyle because you need to not dodge at all for the first couple of seconds to reach blue sharpness with the Ibushi Lance. But once you've done that, you can go crazy with the hone dodges and have a lot of fun. Speaking of blade scale hone, there were some people in the last video's comments asking for me to check if it works with guarding. Unfortunately, it doesn't. It's a massive shame because personally, using blade scale hone is really fun. And if it worked on the insta block, it would completely remove a lot of sharpness issues that the Lance has at the moment. In the slim to none chance that someone at Capcom is watching this, please make Bladescale Hone work with Instablock. It would be so amazing for Lance. I'll quickly flash a chart showing how much a meta set is better by. The meta set being 13% better if you're not running evasion skills, and 19 to 23 percent better depending on the amount of evasion skills that you bring. The grinder set is better with only around a 10 percent loss in damage. The main reason why these lose out is because you're dropping offensive guard because obviously you're not blocking things. So if you struggle to activate offensive guard normally then the difference between the meta set and evasion sets will be smaller. Personally, I'd give this set a 3 out of 5. It's incredibly nostalgic to hop through Nagakuga Tales, but with the massive improvements to Lance's ability to block over the last few games, it's a bit of a relic of the- Next up is the I Miss Health Augment armor sets. So Health Regen is in an interesting place in Sunbreak. It's not nearly as strong as Health Augment was in World but it's much stronger than it was in 4U. Although 4U's was so bad that I reckon most people will have forgotten that it was even an option in that game. Healing health via Blood Rite is in my opinion the most fun of all the health augments that we've had. 
in Monster Hunter because you have to target parts that you've broken to make use out of it. It just adds another level to the game. I've got two sets here. I've got one that uses a max level of Blood Rite and then two levels of Part Breaker and then a second set which drops to two Blood Rite and one Part Breaker in exchange for better damage. Blood Rite works really well with peak performance because the healing makes staying at max health a realistic thing for most of the hunt, and it's also quite a nice comfort skill to have. Sheathing to heal is the main place that a lance user tends to die, so being able to heal without doing that is a godsend. The only problem I have is that when I'm fighting afflicted monsters, they give you blood blight, and that feels just like a direct upgrade to blood right. So bringing blood right to afflicted monsters can feel a bit like a waste. That said, assuming that your peak performance is active, then a meta set is only 12% better than the blood right 3 set, and a meta set is 7% better than the blood right 2 set. If you then have a look at when the sets don't have peak performance active, then the meta set pushes ahead and is 17% better than Blood Rite 3, and 11% better than Blood Rite 2. Overall, it's a very comfortable style of armor set. You basically never need to use potions ever again, and it combos with peak performance, and it makes staying at 100% health quite a fun thing to sort of work for. So I'd give it a 4 out of 5. Moving on, we'll look at a wide range armor set. I'm not one for recommending wide range personally, especially for the lance, but I know that wide range is quite popular, and I can see a few cases where it is useful. Mainly that stubborn friend of yours is refusing to heal for the fourth quest in a row. Historically, lance hasn't been a good weapon for wide range because of its slow sheathing time, but Sunbreak has given us access to sheathing retreat and that allows us to get to healing other people much quicker than before, and it makes wide range more viable on the lance. However, sheathing retreat does require a wire bug to use, so you might not always have access to it. I also know that some people really 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 like Twinvine, so here is a quick sheath 3 variation that doesn't rely on sheathing retreat, and that'll avoid the reliance on wire bugs and still allow you to use Twin Vine as your switch skill instead of Sheathing Retreat. Interestingly, the EFR difference between Wide Range and Meta is actually quite low. The Meta set is only 4% better. The Quick Sheath variation is considerably worse, the Meta set being an 11% improvement. I've been trying very hard to keep my own opinions outside of the maths comparison bit, but I think this is a good teaching point. Wide range is the closest set to the meta in terms of damage that we've covered, but I'd also recommend it the least. Evade Lance is a playstyle change, and using Blood Rite to not have to heal is also a significant reason to drop damage from an armor set. But we have life powders, we've got Dust of Life, and we've got the radial menu and bringing materials to combine mid hunt that gives us so much healing potential for teammates before we even factor in wide range. So the even though the damage drop is low, using wide range just doesn't feel like a valuable trade. That said, wide range still has a niche, which is when you know that you're going to be running out of dust of life and you still need to heal your teammates, but I think it's pretty rare, so I'm going to give it a 1 out of 5. Probably worth mentioning that my out of 5 rating is just a personal thing, don't take it too seriously. Speaking of RPG roles, Lance also has the tank role. The best way of trying to fulfill this is by using the Wirebug skill Twinvine 
and Diversion. Diversion is a level one skill, so you can fit it into more or less any armor set here with minimal issues, but fair warning, it doesn't really work. It doesn't do much. In a similar vein, I'll show this off for completion's sake, but I wouldn't recommend it for the life of me. Immortal tank builds, if you really want to do that, go for it. But it's such a waste of armor skills. If this kind of thing appeals to you, I'd recommend looking at what aspect of the armor set is the main attraction, is it the stun resistance, is it the healing health, and then taking that core bit and adapting a set with that and more damage skills. Getting the monster killed quicker is going to be more beneficial to your survivability than some of the other skills on this set. If we compare this set to a sort of still over the top, but much more reasonable guard five, guard up three, then the guard up, the, the guard set is a 40% damage increase. And you're not really losing any survivability in real terms, or at least if you're trying to play the game rather than letting the monster eat you. We can also use the Blood Right Healing set that we've already talked about as another comparison point. The Blood Right set will increase your damage by 65% and you still get health recovery. Zero out of five, I don't see why this level of defense is necessary. Next up is something for people that like the idea of playing with status. Unfortunately, status doesn't seem to be in a good place in Sunbreak. Well, to clarify, status is really strong at the moment, but it's really strong on guns and on dogs that have guns. Assuming you've got dogs shooting status ailments, the status you gain from using status lances is kind of minimal. However, there are a few cases where monsters are significantly weak to poison, enough so that it makes poison sort of useful, so doubling up on status, either having poison dogs and a paralysis lance, or having paralysis dogs and a poison lance is kind of a fun playstyle, and with the amount of status flying around, it's a good excuse to test out Foray. I'd give the set two out of five. I really want to like it because it fits that itch of helping others out by being like a status master, but it's not exactly great. Using a 3-2 charm rather than a foray charm hurts it quite a bit because foray isn't a bad skill-ish, but it's not on any decent armor pieces. If you can get a decent foray charm, your options for a foray armor set would be much better, but whether that makes it good enough, I don't know. So this one is less of an armor set and more of an experiment in how much we can maximize element damage. And I guess it's a lesson in why we build raw lances even when we have high element lances in the game. I feel I've done Element a little bit dirty by making the build in this way because it's not optimal, but every step I try and take to make the build more optimal is a step that involves reducing the elemental damage on the lance and increasing the raw damage, which is sort of the whole point I'm trying to make <laughs> with this armor set. This is a 1 out of 5 for me, I think. I want to like it. The idea of Charge Master is cool, increasing the elemental damage on Charged Wide Sweep. Uh, and I know that someone asked if Charged Wide Sweep was affected by Charge Master. It is, but it's not useful, unfortunately. It's not meant to be. Finally, our last set of the video. It's another one that I think is genuinely good-ish. We've got a good luck set. We've also got Capture Master on it. It's great for when you really need monster parts. 
I don't know the values of the skills activating off the top of my head. Uh, it doesn't seem super often, to be quite honest, but that might be my bad luck. Whether this set is valuable or not depends entirely on how much longer your hunt times become when using this compared to a meta set, and whether or not the one to three-ish extra rewards that you get when the skill actually procs are worth the time loss. If we say that per quest you're getting roughly 20 to 25 reward items, including the monster calves, the break rewards, thief cat, etc., then this set needs to give you, on average, 1.5 to 2 extra monster parts every quest for the damage loss to be worthwhile. I'd give it a 3 out of 5. I can see it working for some people, but maybe not for me when it takes 35 hunts to get a Magmadron mantle. We'll, uh, we'll call it there. Hopefully you found the sets and the comparisons useful. It's been fun making these and using a bunch of strange Arva sets that I otherwise wouldn't be using. Uh, thanks again to the people that brought these comments to my attention. And if you have things that you want to see me test or other video ideas that you want to share, leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please support me by liking the video. Uh, it really helps me out, and if you want to see more, subscribing, but most importantly, thanks for watching.